Hey everybody, what's up? It's Brian Fleischman again, back with some App Lab action. Um, so a uh, couple requests I got through email that I thought might be kind of fun. Um, somebody was asking how to make rock, paper, scissors in App Lab. Um, I don't have that solution ready. Um, so I think maybe I'll do this one on the fly. Um, usually I'll kind of prepare these videos by doing hit first myself so I don't fumble through anything, but I don't know. I'm in the mood to maybe fumble through something. Um, so maybe if you're a student out there taking AP Computer Science principles um, and your teacher kind of seems like they know it all a little bit or you see people on the internet and they always just like whip through stuff, uh, it's okay to struggle through some problems. So maybe I can model that process and how I go through it. Uh, it's okay to not like know the answer to how to do something right away. Why don't we get started? Let's design this thing. So maybe I'll have a screen at the beginning that's like, I'm going to make this, it's not going to look great. And if I want to make it look awesome, then I'll probably, you know, do that at another time. I'm going to do a text area real quick. So the first part's going to be designed. If you're going to, if you want to skip to like the programming part, then, you know, go ahead and, uh, and look forward. Okay. So I can probably make this look somewhat okay. Maybe I can kind of do this. Can give it like a, a center text align, um, and then I don't know. You know, clean clean is nice, right? So nice and clean and simple. Um, I'm gonna make it read only. I don't want it to ever change on accident. It's the beginning screen. Um, so how about this? I'll also have a button that says to you know to, to play the game. Usually, I kind of like my buttons. The green the green color doesn't really do it for me. Um, let's go. I think we grab the swatch and. Yeah, kind of a nice dark blue. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. How about this? So, play. So, the thing about this, um, I wanted to show you this. I could have just gotten right to the game. But I want to make sure if you're kind of uh, new to App Lab that you can have multiple screens. A lot of the students I'm teaching right now uh, have been asking about screens. So, maybe you out there are also wondering about screens. Um, I'm going to give this a meaningful name. I want to get in the habit. So I'm going to call that the play button. And I do my code in the text. I don't usually use the, the blocks. I find them kind of like uh, particularly, they kind of, I feel like they kind of get in my way almost. So if you use blocks, um, I'll show you where to find some of this stuff. So let's actually make an event. Um, let's make an event for, for our play button. Okay, so let's say the ID, the first thing in the on event needs to be the the, uh, the element of your UI that you want to you listen to, right? So this is the play button. And I think it'll know what I'm talking about. And when it's clicked, I'd like to trigger an event, right? And what I want to do is I want to change to another screen, right? So maybe I'll, it's, if you look in here, it's set screen, right? So let's go ahead and say set screen. You can drag that in if you want. And I'm going to go to screen two. So screen two will be kind of like where we play the game, I guess, or one of the screens that we play the game. Let's make sure this works. Um, hopefully when I get here, I should be able to go to screen two, and I do. Very good. Okay. Um, I don't like the border. Why not? Real quick. If you don't like the border of your text, we can go, uh, let's look at text area one, which isn't very aptly named. How about welcome text? I highly recommend you get in the habit of... Um, of naming your elements something that means something, or else you end up with button one, button two, button three, and text area one, two, and three, and then it just be kind of this becomes disappointing to look at. <laughs> so, yeah, let's go ahead and, and name it something. Um, am I able to change the border? Let's see: width, height, x position, y position, text color, background color, um, depth. I don't know. Maybe I can't. Maybe this text area is just how it is, right? So if I, I Eh, let's just leave it for now and focus on the programming aspects. Okay, so let's go to screen two and design. Um, how about we do this? How about we say choose an option? So I'm going to say this is going to be the prompt text. Choose one. Of course, I'm going to make this in the center as well. Probably going to have it be a little bigger. A lot bigger. Choose one. And then I'm going to put the rock button. And before I forget, I'm going to... I'm going to name it. I don't want it to be called button two. 
the ID, this will be rock button. Um, and check this out. I, the cool thing, there's like this, this, uh, this feature on here where you can duplicate a button, and I'm gonna wanna do that after I make it, uh, after I make it look like I wanna look. So how about the text is gonna say rock, and then I can make that a better color. I think my other color was kinda like in this area, yeah. And we will go ahead and make it bigger. Rock. Yeah, there we go. So check it out. I can duplicate it. And basically, I want all these buttons to be the same, except for they're going to say different stuff. So this will be scissors. So I don't have to do any of the styling anymore. Let's make this one the paper button. Paper button. And its text in there will be paper. And finally, one more duplicate will be the scissors button, right? Scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Let's go ahead and call this the scissors button. So now, um, although it's kind of annoying to have to put that ID there, can't emphasize it enough. Now we have, now it's like uh, clearly labeled. By the way, this is going to bother me. It's not spelled correctly. So now I can see wh where everything is, right? I don't have to like fumble through and kind of guess which one is which. Um, okay, there's choose one, rock, paper, scissors. All right, so how about now we have to kind of get to some logic. There actually should be one more screen, I believe, right? Can we, it's going to be the results screen, right? So let's call this like the results screen. Um, and then actually I'm going to change this as well. Screen two shouldn't be called screen two. It should be called like the, the choose screen. And the first screen should be called the welcome screen. Okay, so let's see, welcome screen. And when I run it, I should be able to get to the play screen. Oops. Oh yeah, it's, I mean, did you see why that didn't work? Okay, here's why. All right, remember back when we coded it, we said uh, change the screen too, but then I actually got wise and named it what it should be called, which I think was called the choose screen. So let's try that now. There we go. So now we're on the choose screen. And once I pick one of these, uh, I should go to the third screen, which would be the, the results screen. Okay. So what we should do real quick is no matter what, no matter how the rest of the game logic goes, we should have all of these buttons um, do the same thing essentially, right? We should all have them switch to the third screen and it's going to do some stuff on that third screen. So let's just take care of that right now. Um, so you don't forget, and it's kind of something that's going to be a good practice for uh, to practice the skill of on event, right? So let's go find on event, and we're going to need a couple of them. We're going to need one here, one for the rock button, one for the paper button, and one for the scissors button. So what is the? I named it. I named these right. The rock button, right? Paper button. And the scissors button. And they're all right now going to do the same thing. All we're going to do is set the screen to the results screen. Okay, so you can set screen and then just make sure we spell stuff correctly. Um, so now they're all going to do this. They're all going to change to the results screen. Okay, let's reset now. Okay. So I have an event listener for each button. So essentially every button is ready to be clicked and, and to execute this function as soon as they are clicked. Okay, so let's, let's make sure. Okay, so that worked. That was the middle button. Let's make sure. I think they're all going to be fine. Yep, so they're all going to that third screen, which happens to be blank right now. Okay, so how about this? While we're at it, why don't we go ahead and go to the design feature. Not the choose screen. How about the, the results screen? Let's, for now... Let's try to get it to say what we chose. That'll be a good start, don't you think? So maybe in this, this screen, all we have is um, a text box that says you chose whatever, right? So right now, let's leave it blank because at the time of the execution of the program, we actually don't know. Um, we don't know what it's going to say because the, we don't know what the user is going to pick. So let's, let's call this choice text. And what we're going to do is 
the choice text is going to, we can change the text in there depending on what the user chooses, right? So let's actually just kind of like simulate it so we can style it. You chose rock. Okay, so let's make it look nicer. Typical stuff here. Let's do center. Make it nice and big. And yeah, that looks okay. I don't really like how tall it is, but you know what? I don't know if that's going to really matter. So let's just, let's, uh, let's leave it like that. That looks pretty good. So now that I know that it looks kind of like I want to, let's actually delete the text now. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Let's go back to the code. Here's what we need to do. So on the event that the rock button is clicked, before I switch to the result screen, I should probably change the text. I think I can set the text. So I can set the text. Um, and here's how the set text function works. You give it a choice. So, so if you look over here, the set text says, why don't you give me an ID? You tell me which thing you want to change and then tell me what you want to put in it, right? So what I can do is it's the choice text, right? You can see now why it's so important to name things the meaningful stuff. What exactly would I want to put in here um, in the case that I click the rock button? Of course, I want to say you chose rock. Okay, and I bet you can guess. Make sure you have semicolons. If you're using blocks, you don't need to worry about the semicolons. And then make sure we're going to do one of these for each of the others. In this case, it'll be paper. And then in this last case, it'll be... <laughs> I actually just started to search for it on my computer. In this last case, it'll be you chose scissors. Nice, right? So let's see if this works. Awesome, see? So now we actually get to change, we get to change the value of that text box, um, you know, depending on what the user chooses. That one needed a little better formatting. Yeah, so maybe I can make that a little taller. So let's switch to the design, go to, the, go to that screen. Let's make this a little taller. All right, so I think that should be fine. It's going to be all right, no matter what. Joe's scissors. Okay, uh, it's going to work. All right. How are we doing? I'm going to check my battery on my computer here. Oh, 37. I'm good. We could keep rolling. Um, all right. So what do we do? Um, we're going to have to, let's go ahead and have the computer make a choice. How about that? So let's go to uh, la, 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 the results screen. So this is going to be the results screen. This is called the choice text. Let's call, um, let's make another text area right below it. And by the way, you know, eventually we might not want to see all this stuff. We might want to see pictures instead, and that's cool. All right, so we're just kind of prototyping it with this text. That's fine. So let's call this the computer choice text. Okay? So, hmm. Okay, so what we, what we want to do is not only just kind of randomly choose what the, what the computer chooses. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is actually write some code that's going to allow the, the computer to choose... A, a number okay so let's actually do this okay let's go back to the code now all of this stuff is kind of event driven functions right so these are on event on event on event I'm gonna kind of push these down right so I'm gonna push these down a little bit and then I'm, I'm gonna write a little comment right here these are event functions okay so these are kind of like a category whenever I want another one I can put them down here uh, the first thing I want to do how about this so for now let's let's um, let's write a function Let's, let's go ahead and have a variable here. Let's, have, let's make a variable. How about that? I don't want to get too crazy with it here. Let's make a variable called computer choice. And it's going to be the uh, either uh, rock, paper, or scissors. Now, what I have to do is to make it truly random, I think it would be easier to make it a random number between 1 and 3, I suppose. Right now, a lot of languages actually, can, can we just print this? Let's actually console.log. Is there a computer, there are language, console.log computer choice. There are languages that, that make it so that the second number you put net doesn't show up. It's like you would, you would only get one and two. And I can't remember for the life of me right now how App Lab does it. So let's, let's see, I get two and one. Okay, I do get a three. So that really truly does choose the numbers between one and three. And that actually makes sense to me. That's, I like this way of doing it. Okay, so now we have a computer that chooses, right? So... Let's real quick write some code um, that's going to update the value of the computer 
text box, right? So let's go ahead and say, um, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna function, I'm gonna package this up, right? So I'm gonna call it a function for now, just because it's kind of like my, my instinct is to make this a function, even though maybe we don't have to. So we're gonna update the computer text box. So function, update computer text box. Okay, so, so I don't have to see the guts of this when I don't want to see it. I can move this function out of the, uh, the main loop. Okay, so let's see. What does it mean? So if the computer's, if the computer's choice is equal to one, this is how you check for equality. You notice how we use a single equal sign when we're kind of assigning a value. We use two equal signs to really check like equality, right? This is either gonna be true or false that it's equal to one, right? So I'm not actually giving the computer choice the value one, I'm checking to see if it is equal to one. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Let's set the text of the computer choice text box to you chose, or computer chose, rock. Computer choice text. So essentially what we're gonna do next, so if the computer choice is one, it's that. Else if the computer choice is two, then it's gonna be a very similar, and then finally, else. So, it's a good opportunity to talk about if, else, if, and else as well. So you might be you might be watching this video and you haven't gotten to some of this stuff in your class. That's okay, just know that anything that, that you see right now that you're kinda of seeing for the first time, you'll probably see a, a pretty, uh, full, nice unit uh, that the code.org people have developed for you. Um, and this could just be considered your first exposure. Don't think of it as like a lesson, but you can kind of see what happens here. It's either going to be one, two, or three. So if it's one, do this. Otherwise, if it's two, do this. And then in all other cases, which is just one other case, right? It's three. Then do this, right? So this is very common structure you'll see in programming. Um, you'll do if, else, if, and else. And it's like only one of those will ever get executed, right? If you chain them together like that, if, else, if, else, if, else, if, you could put as many else ifs as you want. And then you have an else of that kind of chain, only one of them will ever get executed, right? So let's see here. Let's actually see if this works. So if the computer choice is one, two, or three, we're gonna kind of change the, the text. Let's see. Computer choice text, the computer choice. Oh, you know what? <laughs> okay, I do this all the time. I wrote this function, beautiful function, right? Never even, never called it. Okay, so let's actually call the function. So let's call update computer text box, classic, classic mistake. Maybe you've made it too. You spend all this time writing this function and then, you know, you never call it and actually have, what is this? I'm missing a semicolon. I should probably put those in there. I think it would have been okay because Java, JavaScript's kind of funny. Sometimes it, it doesn't care about semicolons. Sometimes it does. But you always put your semicolon. How about that? Computer chose scissors. That's not how you spell scissors. And I never formatted that box, did I? Oh no. <laughs> oh, see, that's, I got this new computer and I, I accidentally swiped backwards on this new trackpad. Okay, uh, I didn't lose anything, did I? A little bit, I only lost a little bit. All right. I need to format that text box. Let's go ahead and get that real quick. So the results screen. And that text box needs to have a similar text to that one. Actually, why don't I just do this? Why don't I just delete this one? I'm going to copy this. And then I'm going to delete this text box. And then I'm going to duplicate this one. Because it has all the right styling. And then I'm going to name it this. Should have done that in the first place. Yeah, how did that work? See, there we go. Yeah, I could, I could fix the capitalization. Okay, so next. Okay, so now we need to actually like decide who wins. Right? So let's decide who wins. So I guess, so you know what? When we, we should also, if you notice that the, there's this computer choice, right? Um, and there's, it's, its value is one, two, or three. So in order to compare our choice to the computer choice, we should probably also have our choice be represented by one, two, and three. So then we can kind of decide who wins. Does that make sense? So let's actually make our... Let's make our, uh, the user choice, okay? Now right now we don't know what it is, so let's just leave it like this. 
Okay, the, the user choice is kind of like undefined right now. So it happens, the user choice gets defined when, when I click one of these, right? So like when I click the rock button, then maybe I should say that the user choice is one because that's that's a uh, that's a rock for the computer. So I wanted to kind of match. You see, they kind of give you these little hints about the indentation. Make sure it looks good. User choice would be two in the event I click the paper, and finally in the event that I click the scissors button, my user choice will be three. Okay. So then, so I can update computer text box. Um, I should probably also, um, when we go to the results screen, what I need to do is I need to compute who won. Okay. Hmm. Well, okay, so that's kind of annoying because I feel like I'm writing code that's really repetitive. Now that's okay. Maybe it would be cool if we get this thing working and then we find out that that there's code that can be kind of condensed and packaged up, we should probably look at it. So what I need to do here is at this point where the uh, where these buttons are clicked, no matter which button is clicked, I need to I need to find out the winner, right? So here's what I need to do: um, I need a function that's gonna that's going to compare the answers, right? So how about this? So how about this? Uh, uh, calculate winner. How about this? Calculate winner. Now this function doesn't exist. But I'm going to call upon it, and then I'm going to design the function. Okay, so I'm going to. I need to calculate the winner. Uh, I should probably. Cal how about this? It probably makes more sense to calculate the winner before I change the screen. Although it would happen as snap of a finger. I just want to make sure it looks like it's in the right order to me. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to fix that. All right, so once one of those buttons is clicked, I can calculate the winner. So what I'm getting suspicious about as a program writer, that I call the same thing. Look at how look at how similar all of this stuff is. Uh, maybe there's a better way. So if you see that the, your code looks like it's like copy pasted, like straight up, and there's only a couple things that are different, you should probably think about whether or not there's a way to kind of factor it, right, and put it all together, right? But you know what? For now, let's go ahead and keep, go forward until we get a functioning program, and then we'll try to optimize it. Okay. All right, so what does it mean to what does it mean to calculate the winner? Okay, to calculate the winner, if okay, so let's how about how about this? Let's make three different cases. So if the user's choice is one, then there's certain stuff is going to happen, right in here. Otherwise. If the user's choice is two, different stuff's going to happen. And then finally, else, the user's choice being three, um, I just want to make sure one of these is entered. So I say if, else, if, and else, uh, then other things are going to happen. Okay, so if the user's choice is one, let's decide uh, if, so how about, how about the tie? So inside this if statement, <clears throat> inside here where its guts are, you can put even more if statements. So that's like layers of if statements, right? It's kind of like inception, right? So you can put if statements inside of if statements. It's like a door inside of a door that leads to another door, right? So here we go. So it's if, if the computer choice is one, then there's a tie, right? So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna just comment this, it's a tie. Otherwise, if the computer choice is so rock. If the if the computer's choice is is paper, which is two, then I want to say that the user wins, right? So that's paper. If the computer choice is two. That's rock. And rock beats paper. No, it's the other way around. Paper beats rock, doesn't it? This would be the computer wins. Otherwise, uh, otherwise the user wins because it would be the scissors and the rock smashes the scissors. Okay. Um, I'm gonna fill. I'm filling out the code with comments now, so I can kind of like, you know, I can fix that in a little bit. I can actually write what it means to do that, right? So if the computer choice, so I'm gonna copy this in. So now, now here it is. I'm gonna I copied that whole block of code into if the user chose paper. So if the user chose paper and the computer chose rock, then I guess the user wins in this case, right? So you kind of have to reason this out.
if the computer cho uh, chose uh, paper and same with the user, then this is a tie. And finally, the other only oppor opportunity is for the computer to win. Okay. Otherwise, the user has chosen scissors. And if the computer chose rock, then the computer wins in this case. Uh, if the computer choice is paper, then this is where the user wins. And then this is where the This is where the, the tie happens. Okay. All right, so you know what we should do probably is, what we could do is like within each of these, we could have a set text, you know what I mean? Like, oh, it's a tie or whatever, right? Like, you know, uh, I guess it might be okay to do that. It's not that much, it's only nine lines. So um, let's go ahead within each of these, let's update the text of the results text box. That's what it's called, right? The results screen has this, doesn't it have a results box or does it not? It doesn't. We actually need that results box, don't we? We need a results box. So let's actually duplicate this. And let's call it the results text box. We're almost done. Very good. Um, so now we can say this. So now uh, in each of these events, we can calculate the winner. And once we calculate the winner, we can change the text box, right? So the tie, I guess we want to say set text of the results text box to it's a tie. All right. And while I'm at it, I'm just, I'm just going to copy this now. I want you to I want you to feel how uncomfortable it is. I, I hopefully you feel as uncomfortable as I do about copy pasting code. Okay, whenever you re repeat your code like this, you should wonder if you're making it look more complicated than it needs to look. So right now, uh, I don't know. Maybe let's we might do a second video where we come back and kind of look for the uh, the opportunities to condense this code and make it more readable. We might be doing okay here. So what, is it, what does it mean? So we have the ties, right? I put those all there. Um, the computer wins. So I'm just going to say you lose, right? If the computer wins, then you say you lose. So where is it the computer wins? There's another one, and then there's one more. I guess this, is, this didn't turn out to be so bad. So uh, the user wins would be like this, and then I'll just say you win. And then the other cases where you win are one, the user wins right here and the user wins right here. All right, so I just wanna make sure, so let's kind of go back and think about what happens here. So calculating winner is a little bit, it's a little bit gross looking, okay? But you know what, All this, this calculate winner function gets triggered uh, after the user chooses, right? And we've set the variable for the user choice so it can be compared to the computer choice. And the proper text will go into that final box. So let's see if we have any bugs, right? So this is kind of on the fly and I just wrote a lot of code. And usually when I write this much code, I kind of like, you know, I wonder, I wonder if I've made an error somewhere. Let's find out. Uh, yeah, line nine, look at this. Set text. Uh, the ID parameter, let's see, I need to see more of that. Refers to an ID which does not exist. Computer choice text. Did I like spell it wrong? I probably did, didn't I? It's going to be on that last screen. Oh, it's... Oh, wait. <laughs> I think I just like totally. That's, uh, yeah, computer choice text. I think that's just going to be. Did I do it like that? Oh. I just want to make sure. Before I just like shotgun it. Computer. Yeah, it's the lowercase c. Is that what I did wrong? Looks better. Okay, so it's a tie. First game, of course, it's as anticlimactic as it could be. I chose rock, the computer chose paper, I lose. I guess that makes sense. Let's do a couple more. Oh, I won. So I've had a tie, a loss, and a one, and they've all made sense. That's good. Um, this is kind of bothering me. I want to capitalize. Let's see. You know what? 
let's call it good for now on this video. Uh, we have a functioning game. Let's do a play. Let's do. Can we do a play again? Uh, this video is getting a little bit long. So how about this? Let's leave it at that. A play again button would be good next. And then perhaps, how about this? That's up to you. You, you do the play again function, okay? And guess what you have to do with the play again? The play again, you're gonna need to make sure that you erase all your variables. You have to erase the computer choice and reset it again, right? Um, you have to um, make sure all the text boxes are erased again or they're back to what they need to be. So starting over is a whole challenge in itself. So why don't you try to figure that out? I hope you found this useful. I know it's kind of like a lot coming at you, but uh, that's rock, paper, scissors, and it's okay. You might want to add some images and it might look you know, more interesting, but you know, fairly simple program um, compared to what you'll be doing later on in the year. I hope this was a nice confidence builder for you. And if you guys have any more ideas about things you want to see and how to do, please let me know. I've been really enjoying reading your comments and, and getting your messages. And, and uh, thanks for, for keeping me motivated. And I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. Keep programming. Uh, fight through all your challenges and let me help you if I can. All right. Happy coding, everybody. See you later.